going to record. Hi, guys. All right, so I'm going to record just so that um, we had a couple people sign up. They're not here yet, but at least maybe we can share some information with the rest of our community who could not um, join. So I have um, nurse practitioner Pat Dean um, heading this Zoom. She is from Nicholas Children's Hospital, and she has been um, kind of supporting epilepsy for over 30 years. She's board president of Epilepsy of Florida. And, um, you know, she's just a wealth of knowledge and she works with Ian Miller. And earlier today, she told me that she taught Ian everything that he knows. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, we're glad to have her and we're gonna kind of pick her brain about all the anxieties that we have about sending our children back to school and just kind of get, um, her take on things, you know, this isn't medical advice. This is just picking the brain of Nurse Pat and, um, you know, kind of talking through maybe our own anxieties and fears and, um, you know, seeing if she can shed some light on that. So go ahead, Pat. Well, thank you, Jenny. And it's um, really nice to be here um, th this afternoon. You know, I haven't been on a Dravet event since the pajama party. So this is a uh, <laughs> really fun. Um, you know, it, it, it's the, the school, this whole school thing is, I mean, is really hard. I mean, it, it's just hard, you know, and it's like one thing to send your children to think about your children in school when, you know, they have like, um, hey, Aaron, when they don't have any, um, you know, developmental problems. But, you know, you know, and this is, this, this makes the decision even harder. And, um, you know, it, it's, um, and it all depends. And like, what do you base your decision on? Now I have, I don't, you know, like I'm talking to you, but you're the one, I don't have the experience that you have, you know, I have the experience of taking care of a lot of children with Gervais syndrome and bad epilepsy but I, I, I don't have one that's home that I have to think about homeschooling or sending back to school. So I, um, I wanna, um, you know, like uh, open, you know, say that to you. Um, but, you know, and, and why, what, how do you base your decision? You know, um, you know, what do you do? It depends a lot on the child. It depends on their, you know, level. I mean, are they having a lot of seizures? Are they not having, you know, are they are they in an okay place with seizures, or are they, um, you know, how how well how well is the school going to do? And the thing is, it what's hard to talk about here. Like, I can address Florida because, you know, um, Ava and I have been talking about um, Florida schools, but. Every, every um, state is different in what they're demanding of parents for school, you know, and I don't know, maybe there's, you know, I don't know how, you know, I, I was talking to Ava and Ava was telling me about that there was a lot of parent shaming going on on the internet around this topic. And, and so, I, I mean, what, what I think about school, like everybody's family situation is different and every parent has the right to make whatever decision they, they want to make what, you know, whether they send their, you know, if their school is open to send your child back or if you decide not to send your child back. But I think that you, you, nobody should feel that they made the right or wrong decision or, or nobody should feel, you know, um, be, intimidated by somebody else's feeling of whether their child should go back to school or not. So, um, you know, like, um, so, you know, obviously when you look at it, you have to kind of say certain things like how comfortable do you feel like with your school's plans? Because I, I've talked to a lot of parents and some of them are very, you know, like happy with what their school is telling them. And then some, think their school doesn't really have a really good formulated, well-formulated plan. Um, I mean, do they have the resources needed? It's not like you're sending a child to school who's just going to sit there in the, in the seat and, you know, listen to the teacher. You have to worry about, I mean, do they have, you know, for, for your kids, there's a lot of auxiliary, auxiliary personnel. They're, 
you know, if the child has a lot of seizures, that there are um, people working in the classrooms and helping, whether the nurses are available. I mean, you have to think about all those things, you know, you have to make sure they have a plan on not only how to deal with your child's educational issues, but how they're dealing with their medical issues and their, you know, behavioral and cognitive and all the other issues that, that go along with it. And um, so I don't know, it, you know, and, and do they, does the school communicate with you? Is the school willing to communicate? Is the school willing to sit down and um, discuss this? And what I also, what I'm, what I'm also curious about is the mask wearing. I mean, you know, some of these kids don't want to wear the mask. You know, I mean, I don't know if, how many of you have had the experience with your child and going out in the mask and, um, and, and how that's been working. Well, what about you, Jenny? Does your daughter wear the mask? She hates it. Absolutely hates it. And that's, um, honestly, that's one of the reasons why I'm choosing not, I mean, one of the many reasons why I'm choosing not to send my daughter to school. Um, so I will be doing a hundred percent remote. Um, but she hates it and, and she understands, um, and she will, you know, it does help because she'll say everybody's wearing a mask. You know, she has limited vocabulary, but, um, she'll see everybody else wearing a mask and she'll say everybody wears mask. And I said, yes. So if you want to do ABC, whatever, you have to wear the mask. Um, and there's been times where she'll put it on, but like, she's, you know, she can't wait to take it off. I don't think she can last a whole day wearing that mask, but she also can't last a whole day looking at a screen either because she didn't do well with that. So it's kind of like a catch 22. What about, what about your, your, you, Erin? What about your daughter? So my son, oh, will, sorry, sorry. No, that's okay. My son will wear a mask. Like we've done some outings, but we've been pretty sheltered and I'm sorry, I'm kind of moving back and forth because I'm also folding laundry. Um, but he will wear a mask, but he chews on it. So he's not going to be wearing one mask all day. He's going to be wearing like 10 masks <laughs> all day. If he were to go, we, um, our district and all of our surrounding districts, we're over in the state of Washington. We, everyone's fully remote to start and we haven't started yet. Um, we start next week. So even, even if we're talking about going back to school for um, just the, the two day hybrid, which is you know one of our next phases, he, um, and he has a one-on-one, -on -one, but that means that one-on-one -on -one is changing you know, up to 10 wet masks a day because he goes through like maybe one an hour or so just from chewing on it. And, you know, a moist mask is delightful. Yes. <laughs> wow. Well. How about Vince? Uh, so my daughter will wear the mask for a short time. Um, we actually do therapeutic horseback riding for her. Uh, and just this weekend she had it on and then she looked at me and she said, Daddy, can I take my mask off now? So she fortunately kind of understands the concept and she's been okay leaving it on. But, but honestly, you know, we put it on her. I put her on the horse. I take it off of her. So it, it, it's been really short term of her wearing it. So will she keep it on all day? I, I don't see that happening. Is she going back to school? She is going to go back to school. So I have three children all together. The two older were Everyone was going to go back to school. They just came back in Pennsylvania and said, uh, we're just kidding. Everyone's going to stay home. So my, t my 12 and 10 year old are now going to stay home. Uh, but because of her IEP, they kind of have to take her um, for lack of a better terminology. Um, and she needs it. She has been struggling heavily at home. She has been struggling connecting with people. She's very outgoing. She's a hugger. She's an interactor. She needs interaction. Um, she's really been struggling. We've, we've tried to do online teaching with her, and it's, it, is, it has been nothing short of a nightmare of her just screaming at a laptop. So the good outweighs the bad, as is our concerns, and we're sending her the five days to a class and hoping for the best. 
So we got a letter today that it looks like there's three other little girls that are going to be virtual. I mean, in class with her, and then I think there will be a bunch of virtual kids. So fortunately, it'll be a small class, but I, she needs to get out of the house. She needs to to do something. Yeah. What, what about the hugging part? Because you know, you know, I, I was I was walking like at the beginning of the pandemic. I was walking around my neighborhood, and and I passed this this adolescent boy, you know, and I just passed him and I, and I realized he was one of my patients and I said, Alex, and he came to run and hug me, you know, it's, it's hard, you know? Uh, it is hard. We've been redirecting a lot with her and I think, I think she's sort of getting it now. I don't know if she, you know, she doesn't understand that it's COVID and why, but I think she's, she's starting to understand that we can't just hug everybody like we used to. Um, but I, I don't know. But again, my wife and I have made the decision that, for her benefit, she needs to go back to school. I mean, and, and I think this. Oh, sorry, the social distancing thing is, is hard, and um, Meredith has no frame of reference of six feet. So I yell pool noodle at her a lot. We live in Florida; she knows what a pool noodle is. So I'm always yelling like, "Hey, get a pool noodle! Get a pool noodle in there! Get a pool noodle in between!" Sounds like so I'll be duct taping a pool noodle to my daughter before she goes to school. Yeah, <laughs> like that's like a tangible thing that she can envision, you know. Like, you know, hey, can I get a pool noodle in there? You know, and then it makes a little more sense because that's a tangible thing. And I appreciated your comment earlier that every parent has to make their own decision. And, and it's hard. I mean, it really is. It's hard. Um, and people looked at us sideways when we said we're sending her to school. But, you know, we know her better. And I, I, I don't know. It might oh. be the wrong answer. I'm, you know. Well, like you said, Vince, uh, you know, the, the good outweighed the bad for you, you know, yeah. like, I, I mean, I, I, I hear you. And I, it's like, I, I'm listening to everything that you say. And I feel, I feel the same way. Like, I so want to send her because we also struggled with her being home. I'm just, you know, for, for me personally, though, it's just a little bit different. I'm, I'm also struggling with the fact that for three years, I fought my district to get her out of district. And <laughs> September, she is starting a new school. So my fear is she's going to go to this new school with, they're all specialized kids. So she's not in a district anymore with just, you know, mixed people. And, you know, I've read their protocol and they seem to be doing a really good job, but if the kids don't need to wear a mask, they don't need to wear a mask. And I'm not going to fault any parent for writing that letter and sending that letter in from their doctor for their medical needs not to wear a mask. And I think she's going to have a hard time when they're telling her to wear a mask, but this kid doesn't need to wear a mask. And I think she's also maybe going to get freaked out because they're, um, you know, all the therapists, all of the nurses, everybody in the school has to wear PPE and they might even have things covering their clothes. So to me, I'm like, this isn't going to look like a school to her. This is going to, and I just, I may be overthinking it, but I feel like that new school for her with all of this things that don't look normal, you know, when COVID goes away, like, is she even going to want to go back to that school? <laughs> Right. Not if their teachers aren't wearing masks. <laughs> yeah, like that's well, what really but, scares me. But I have to tell you, what I, what I think, though, think is interesting is that I, I thought the kids would be all freaked out because we were all wearing masks and face shields and things like that. But they don't seem to even notice. You know what I mean? No. Like, you know, no. there's, there's, you know, I mean, they just don't like us anyway, you know, <laughs> doctors and nurses. They just don't like them anyway, I guess. But I mean, I, I, I was astounded. I just thought they would be a little kind of taken back or anything, but they don't seem to even like notice like. Well, you know? it's funny because Lionel actually, um, he loves his nurses and doctors. So I'm sorry that you are unloved, but um, he loves when they're wearing gloves and masks. So he's thrilled about it. <laughs> but, but I'm saying, I thought they would be like kind of freaked out or like- Well, right. And that's why I think he's not because I think they're so used to seeing yeah, like maybe. so many of their healthcare providers that they see so routinely always all the way masked up. 
Yeah, but now we wear face shields. Oh, yeah. All, you know, all that stuff, you know, it's, um, you know, it, it's very, you know. But I, I, I don't know. It, it's hard. I was telling um, uh, Jenny, like one of one of the patients that I have who is just, just doesn't do well, you know, with this learning, you know, computer, but she has two kids, she has uh, two sisters that are in high school you know, and have to kind of sit in front of their computer all day. And she wants to play. And she's banging on their door and banging on their door. And her mother, her poor mother, has to drive around in the car half the day, you know, because it's not like you could take them anywhere, you know, and, it, and it's just really hard. But I just think that parents have to like, look at their school. And if they if you feel comfortable taking your child to school, you, you should do it, you know, you should do it. And if you don't, you shouldn't, you know, I mean, I think you have to look if, I don't know if Vince, if you drive your daughter to school or, I mean, I don't know about buses and that kind of thing. Well, typically she takes a bus. We're still having that conversation. Yeah. Because that might be something about, you know, how the buses are, like how, yeah, you know, I mean, what I'm, I'm hoping they're... that because of where we are, we're not close to the school. It's in district, but we're not close that maybe she's going to be the only one on the bus. But, I, you know, especially because all the mainstream kids are going to be in in virtual. So I don't know. So we don't know about anything about bus yet. It's I mean, they're starting on the 8th and there's still a lot of information we're waiting on. Yeah. But I mean, I, I was um. I was even, even, I was like, um, I was riding my bike one day and I was on the, in a bus route where they had, where buses go, these lanes where only buses can go and it started to pour rain. So I pulled in under, you know, under a covering and there were a lot of people waiting for the bus. And when the bus stopped, they would only let two people get on the bus. So, you know, I, I you know, I guess they're, you know, they, it, I felt so bad for all these poor people waiting for a bus. But I guess, you know, you know, I, I hadn't thought about that, but transportation, you have to kind of, you know, make sure there's social distancing and, and everything there and cleaning the, you know, how often, you know, cleaning the buses and stuff would be an issue. But I, I think, um, I don't know, I just think it's really a parental decision and nobody has the, you know, oh, I guess it's a parental decision and a school district decision as well. But, but it, Ava, you had, we were talking and you were telling me about for some of the kids in Florida that there, there are also sometimes if people needed some resources. Well, you know, we've had some neat opportunities spring up for like parents who work, um, places where kids can go to do their virtual work and have support. Um, you know, some of like the churches and synagogues for a very reasonable rate, um, you know, with the, the cleaning and the social distancing, our Jewish community center has a really great program and um, they are wonderful with special needs kids. Um, they are hosting kids in like virtual learning labs so parents can go to work. And so that's another nice opportunity. Yeah, so I think that's a good thing for parents to do, you know, to look into your community and is there any like organization like you would talk the JCC and where, where you live was doing it, but are there any organizations that are doing any of those kind of things for, for children with disabilities? I mean, I think that's wonderful. You know, obviously, you know, the, the way the world works, if, you know, you can pay for something, you could probably get it but you know sometimes um everybody can't um afford you know the the various services that are, that are available anyway um you people seem to have it down we must be faking it awful well <laughs> you, you know you, you don't seem to be like freaked out or concerned or you seem to have you know looked at looked at the situation very rationally and made your decision based on science and your child and your family's needs. Yeah, I think we're used to having to make those decisions already. 
I think it's getting used to the rest of people who aren't always necessarily thinking about um, a lot of those things all the time. If that makes sense, you know, like we've, we've been quarantined and isolated for many times and long times. And um, so it's certainly, I mean, it's not easy. It maybe just doesn't seem like it's the worst it's ever been for us. Um, you know, I've been watching a lot of other um, special needs families in our community, in our district, um, really panic because they don't have, they have two working parents. They have a child who is completely un, you know, able to participate in any sort of online learning. Same with Leonel, but he at least can have other, you know, independent um, positions. And so just being able, you know, kind of the perspective of, we'll maybe figure this out. Um, for us, it's helped that the decision was taken away in terms of everybody out here is doing remote learning. Um, and I have been saying a lot, like, like our family especially has a lot of pandemic privilege. I already am a stay at home mom. I have a background in um, special education. Um, unfortunately, Leonel and Eloise are not impressed with that. And so they don't think that I'm <laughs> anything great and I'm just mom who's pretending to be you know a teacher um, but what we are trying to do um, is explore other things that might work for us so I know there's this big talk about pods across the nation and learning pods and whatnot um, and we're not homeschooling we are going to give the remote learning a try just because I adore his special education team but we are looking to try and connect with the other um, special ed students that are in his first grade program to say you know what can we all agree upon as far as as far as um, the um, standards of wearing masks, washing hands, reporting if you're ill, so that we can do some occasional um, learning or play dates here, um, and just to kind of share those resources. Because it's even though we're close to his school, it's not our neighborhood school, as is probably the case for many, for several in his program. Um, so we're we're just trying to figure out ways to to do that. It's, it's the neurotypical four-year-old. I need somebody to take off my hands. <laughs> yeah. I think she's going to go see Uncle Vince in Philadelphia <laughs> for a while. And they're over. We miss her. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting. I, I got asked to write a seizure kind of what to do, like a seizure emergency protocol in the time of COVID, you know, like what to do if you see someone having a seizure now. And I, I think, I said, well, you know, you really wouldn't change many things. You know, you would still do, you know, you would still respond, you know, the way you would respond. I, I said, you know, like, so, you know, I'm, I'm trying to write something for people and I'm thinking, I said, well, the one thing I would do, you know, if you have a mask on, keep your mask on. If you have a mask and gloves, keep them on. But if the person seizing has one on, take the mask off. You know, I said there, but for the most part, you know, we have to, we treat seizures the same way, whether you're, you know, whether there's COVID or there's not COVID, you know, and um, I would not, not help someone having a seizure just because you're afraid they have COVID. Or any medical emergency. Like, I, I think that that is, you know, sure we are trying to distance, but even if I saw somebody drop their grocery bag, I'm not going to just go, oh, can't get close to you. You know, we would try to figure out some way to still be right. compassionate and maybe just hold my breath for a little bit longer. I don't know. Well, well, you know, the American Heart Association put out a whole thing about, you know, heart attacks, you know, like if you see someone having a heart attack. And I think about that, like when I'm in public, so I think, you know, in the supermarket, I think, what if that guy has a heart attack? <laughs> But you would do the same thing, you know, you would, you would intervene the same way you would, you know, but, um, is your laundry folded, Erin? Oh, God. 
<laughs> I've been refreshing like three loads all week. So I've got three loads here to work on. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's never done. Pat. <laughs> I barely take mine out of the basket. <laughs> I may have washed a load three times just because I was like, oh, it's not very long rewash. <laughs> uh. Anyway, um, I, I don't know that I gave you anything that you didn't, you know, taught you anything you didn't already know. You know, I mean, I, I just think, you know, you are kind of well-informed parents. You know, you advocate for your children and, you know, you look at the situation before you make a decision. So, but um, anyway, I, um, I look forward to the next Gervais conference. You know, I was really sad we didn't get to go to Texas because I also saw, 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 taught Scott everything he knows. He was also one of my fellows. So I have, you know, I figure I taught these guys everything they know. So I'm always happy to see them, you know, but um, yeah. Do you and, guys have anything specific for Pat that you guys want to ask? The two of you left. <laughs> Uh, no, I mean, I, I, I don't have any specific questions. I actually wasn't really sure coming into the call what, what it was all about, but I saw Gervais and stress and both <laughs> of those fit my world. So I signed up. <laughs> yeah. I, I think, um, for me, it's just kind of the, um, it's not a question. It's just that the impact on top of the anxiety and mental health issues we were already experiencing and when the rest of the world is seemingly healthy, has this new added piece on top of it, whether it's the back to school decisions um, and you're just trying to make the best, healthiest choice for your child. Um, and then also having that fear that you're having to choose maybe between their mental health with you know the social, socialization and their education um, there was always a lot of talk of, well, if they don't get this, they'll fall behind. And then the memes and the articles about what's this arbitrary fall behind. Um, and it truly though, for us though, is it, it's just making sure that they still stay on top of their skills because our fall behind doesn't look like, oh, they re can recoup that. We, we just never know when we have all these other added layers of yeah. medications and seizures and, and this and that. So, um, it's, it's just all of that, the additional layers of more and more anxiety and some days are fine and then it crashes and, and other days are not. Um, so just trying to, I guess, navigate what that looks like, what resources to access, if, we, if me personally would even really access them beyond um, just talking about it, um, but yeah, there's that. Well, you know, the only, you know, obviously the stress that comes along with, um, you know, being indoors with your children 24 hours a day, or even without your children, you know, just being indoors, what we've had to kind of hold change the way we live, the way we look at life. And, um, and, and a lot of people, I mean, there is a higher incidence of depression and anxiety, you know, you know, but like you said, you know, <laughs> You, you're actually better, you know, prepared for this than other people, you know, because you've lived with such, you've had to live with such anxiety, you know, um, so I, I read one time about epilepsy that it was a disorder of anxiety, you know, because you're not so worried about the seizure that's happening now. The worry is about the next seizure, like when that's going to happen and where are you going to be when that happens. So you all have been, um, kind of living this life. So you're probably better prepared for a pandemic than the general public. But I don't think there's anything, you know, you know, there's nothing that anybody has been offering, you know, people, you know, everybody puts these videos up, you know, for you to meditate and for you to do yoga. And, you know, and I, it doesn't seem to me you have a lot of time to meditate or do yoga, Erin. <laughs> it interferes with my candy crush. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's all, you know, you guys know, it's always important to have some kind of escape or, you know, you know, something.
that's yours, you know, that's just yours. And, but um, yeah, I, I don't, I wish I had an answer, Erin. Uh, <laughs> well, I know, I, w I wish there was an answer and a magic something. And I know that there's not. Um, I would just say, Jenny, you know, keep up what you guys are doing as right. far as keeping right. Right. the connections and, and whatnot. And, you know, we join in. I think connection is the answer, you know, staying connected. Just somehow well, and I, big... and I, I think Pat, I mean, I, I think you, even though you feel like you haven't done anything, I think you are putting a lot of our minds at ease because you are sitting here saying, listen, there is no right answer. It's up to you. I mean, here you are in the face of COVID and, and our children, um, working at the hospital and you're saying there is no right answer. It's up to you. You know your child best. You do what you need to do. I, so. I can assure you that I have not taken any care, care of any children with Dravet or even epilepsy with COVID. You know, I am seeing the patients I've been seeing just have seizures. You know, they, they, they haven't, I haven't seen any Incre in, in, in this population, any, you know, I, I mean, I haven't taken care of any patients, my patient, you know, because everybody, because my family and friends worry about me because I'm old and I'm going to the hospital. <laughs> I said, I'm not in the COVID unit, you know, and, and we do have some kids, but, you know, it's certainly not like they see in the adult world. I think our, our community, I mean, I saw a lot of it as this is happening we know how to quarantine. We know how to keep our kids, you know, we do our best with what we can with flu even. And so, I mean, for us, it's just been a, we, we stay home. He doesn't, you know, we go out occasionally and we definitely, you know, do walks and play outside, but he's not going grocery shopping. He's not, you know, and we aren't even really like we, you know, try to get as much delivery as we can. And so this is actually the healthiest he's ever been. And he only got sick because the other one hurt her knee. So I had to take her into urgent care and he got sick, a stomach bug just from being there. So that was just one of those, oh, okay. Yep. A reminder of how easily you can well, get sick. We're seeing that in pediatrics in general, the kids are not sick this year. And, and the, you know, like we don't even know about the spread of COVID in children, I guess, because they're not in school because that's where they get sick, you know? And yeah. so- so there's good news and bad news, I guess. So, mm -hmm. so Aaron, you're in Washington State. I am. And what is the weather like in Washington? It's um, probably raining. Oh, <laughs> I can't even. I can't even um, sit in a good spot. It's so bright blue and sunny right now. <laughs> This is our great time. This is when our, um, the heat, the, that, um, just disgusting 80 degree weather is over. Um, and <laughs> speak, for, speak for yourself. <laughs> no, I moved here, um, to Washington in 2001 from New Mexico. And when I left New Mexico, it was 115 degrees. And when I got to Washington up at the Canadian border in Bellingham it was 75 degrees you know three days later and I called my mom I was in grad school bawling because I I had nothing to wear like the, it was I was freezing I had summer it was June I had nothing like all winter things would have been in a box and winter in New Mexico is not that same kind of thing and and now it is 75 is just is magic wonderful Ooh, it's warm in here kind of thing so it's beautiful and sunny and fall is starting to get on its way we've we've lost our high heat days not raining vince <laughs> well here it's hot where Love are you pat i'm in miami ah and um we don't have fall we have hurricane season <laughs> on top of everything else I, yeah, there was just, I don't know what, I have, actually, I didn't look at what Laura did, that storm that was heading in the Gulf. I don't know if it hit Texas or something. But. There was two heading your way. There was mm -hmm. Laura, and then there was a, I forget the other one right behind. Marco? Right? Right. There's, no, right. There's always two, you know? 
They they travel in in, in a in, in couple. pairs. They travel in pairs. Oh, I thought I that remember, was unusual. I, I, I have no I, concept of hurricanes. No, Not. No, they're interesting. I mean, we the, the only I was at the Gervais conference in sixteen, where it was just a steam bath. Mm-hmm. Um, and I went one other time before then, but, and I remember there was this, like, there was a storm and we had been out shopping somewhere at like an outdoor mall in Miami. And it, all of a sudden the rain just hit. And I mean, suddenly like the parking lot and everything was just flooded and then it stopped. And it was, I had no, that was even before my Washington days. So I had no concept of that kind of weather. Wow. I still don't. <laughs> Well, it hasn't been bad, but I've been here for many a hurricane, you know, it's, um, it's an event. So Jenny, speaking of that, do you know how our families are doing on top of COVID and um, these severe weather kinds of things? Is anybody reaching out and? No, I mean, we haven't had anybody reach out with any kind of um, needing assistance or anything. Mm -hmm. um, at least not that I have heard of. Usually that stuff um, goes um, to Jamie, mm -hmm. um, but I haven't heard any influx in, in that. Um, I know we're waiting for another storm. We're supposed to be getting a storm now, I guess, left over from these hurricanes coming. I'm in, um, Vince, I'm in North Jersey. I'm in Morris County. Oh, okay. Uh, New Jersey, so. I don't know if you're due to get the rain too. You said you were in PA, right? Yep, I'm in I'm in Bucks County. It's just easier to say Philadelphia for those who don't know. Um, <laughs> but I'm in Bucks County, so um, it doesn't look like we're going to get hit. It looks like it's 90. Yeah, it looks like we're okay today. Yeah, it's starting to get dark, and I see my trees moving now. Wow. My things are flying around, so. Yeah, we probably will get hit. Um, but yeah, the last storm that we had like two weeks ago, I lost power for six days, five, five and a half days. What? Uh, you were part of that? Yeah. Yes, oh, I was yeah. part of that. And, you know, luckily for us, I mean, it was hot, but it wasn't as hot as it could have been. So we, we managed. I mean, I didn't have a generator or anything. Um, you know, I just opened my windows during the day and we stayed upstairs because I have a lot of light in my house. And then at night I would put a light on and it was really hot at night sleeping. And I slept with my daughter because our monitor wasn't working. So, um, cause normally she sleeps on her own and I just have a monitor. So I slept with her and she thought that that was fun. Um, kicking me all night long. She's a bed, she's a bed hog. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are only in Bucks County. If you lose power again, feel free. You can, you can come stay here. Vince, I'm coming over. <laughs> no problem. Although, ask Erin. She might not recommend it. <laughs> Cindy is lovely. Cindy and the kids are lovely. <laughs> it's Vince I got to worry about. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of, so, kind of what so everyone says. <laughs> Vince's family and our family got our seizure dogs at the same time. So, okay. We spent two weeks sitting side by side in Xenia, Xenia, Ohio. And uh, so we I don't are, know about we all Gervais family. families, but these two Gervais families were hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody paired with Aaron, at least. I don't know you well enough, Vince, but I'm, start, I'm starting to. Yeah, but. this is. You're, you're getting some Vince right here. You're, you're getting low-key Vince. I'm just exactly. I'm on my very best behavior at the very moment. Very good behavior. Right. <laughs> well, I think, Vince, you need, to, you need to join our coffee chats or happy hours. Uh, it's funny. I was just going to – I didn't want to cut Pat off because she was talking about it. I was going to say, how do we – so, you know, Adriana is now nine, um, and we've been supporting the local Epilepsy Foundation for nine years – and then, you know, one day we were like, well, why are we, I mean, not why are we doing that, but we should be supporting the Dravet more than we should be supporting, you know, the Epilepsy Foundation. So um, we've been meaning to try to connect with the foundation and how do we connect? And Aaron could probably share all this information, but we just haven't done it. Um, yeah, well, I'd be happy. You, now just, you go online and <laughs> press donate. <laughs> Look, Vince, I'm connected. Yeah, it's, it's, it's Jenny to go to. 
<laughs> okay. Just yeah, so. I mean, both, right. both Cindy well, and I would like to be involved. Um, okay. I would be more involved, honestly, just because of who I am, as opposed to who she is. She's a little more low key than I am. I like I like them already. <laughs> All right. Well, Vince, you hold on one second. Let's see. So, do we have anything? Any other questions for Pat? I just want to make sure we. No, Pat, are you actually putting together that form, the documentation, or that you were discussing? About... I did. Oh, you did. You already have I, it. Well, I I know. I say I didn't, but. I could put something together and send it. I mean, I wouldn't do it just because I'm asking if you had one and you'd put it together, I would share there's it with a, There's no, a back to school decision making tool if you want it, you know. We're past that, we've already made our decision. I, I know. Are you talking about that one or about how to treat, how to help someone who's having a seizure in the time of COVID? I don't that, think, I don't think you did that one though. No, I, I just yeah, remember. Uh, Pat, you said that you were asked to write an article. Well, no, it's just an, like, you know, like write what you do. Yeah, and I did uh, write it. I did oh. write it. But I could, I could send you that. But it's like, it's like I said, it's, it's, it's really for people who don't know what to do. But I would send it to you all okay. so you could have it. I think that would be good for us to still share because. Agreed. Seizures aren't going anywhere in this time. And mm -hmm. it's still important, like in our community of Dravet families and families with epilepsy. Right. That if you see our child having a seizure, we still need your help with that, you know, right. or however, people maybe, still need your assistance. Sure, okay, I'll send it on to you, Jenny. Yeah, send it to me if you don't mind, and then I can post it in our support group because maybe people want to, um, you know, share it with their school nurse, um, just as kind of like a guideline or share it with their doctor and then their doctor can, you know, maybe write something for their seizure action plan. I also added something um, into the chat just because when I upload this, that chat will be visi visible to everybody. Um, like Vince had already said, and, and I know Erin, you already have your, we already have our decisions made, but the CDC does have um, a decision tool yeah, that perfect. I added up there. Right. Um, I was looking at it earlier um, just to see if I found anything and, um, you know, looks, looks decent. Um, right. Something for people to use if they're still having some trouble. Um, and it does talk about uh, medical complex uh, children on there and stuff like that. Right. So, um, so I'm going to end the recording and we can thank Pat so much for hey, all her help. Hey, and advice. So and, nice uh, to meet you, Vince. <laughs> You'll change your mind. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I'm the where is where is the co next conference, Jenny? Do you have a the next conference? Uh, all right. Well, bye everybody. I'm just gonna stop the recording. Bye. Bye.